can't be my bad splitter. Know the streets say I'm a bad nigga. Cause I'm a savage, not if I sag with you. I feel like six tape one changed my life really. Shout out to Bino, he really kind of alley ooped that situation. Like he, it was his suggestion that we even made a tape, and um, I feel like that's what really got LA eyes on me. I first heard Blash off. Oh. Kaylin, for real, for real, the right witty swing, and it was a. Uh, I really, I really liked the beat. You know, so I thought it was, you know, the type of sound that'd be crazy for the city. And I reached out, and uh, he was hella cool. Started sending me packs, and I'd do a few joints and send them back. And uh, one time he sent me a song with some vocals on there, and it was savage actually. But at the time, I'm not no, you know, I'm like, who, like who's this? Like it's hard. He yeah, that's me. I'm like, oh, say less. So ever since then, we've just been rocking, like sending shit back and forth, going crazy. Like everything he sent me, like I feel like he don't miss. You know what I'm saying? His workflow was like, as soon as I sent him something, he'll send me something right back. I sent him like five beats. He'll send them all back, whole songs. And um, I was the same way. Like if he'll leave an open verse, I shoot it right back to him. We was just bouncing off each other's energy. Six songs called a six tape. It was easy, you know what I'm saying? It was organic, we didn't think too much about it. Just put that shit out in the universe. Reception was crazy. Like when we first dropped it, it wasn't really like, it wasn't a sudden impact. Like it grew over time, but it was an organic growth. And everybody from LA was like, it was like a word of mouth thing. Have you heard the six tape? You sleep if you ain't been listening to the six tape. The impact I expected from six tape, I expected it to do something, honestly, because I was in, I was in, you know what I'm saying, a weird period in my life, you know what I'm saying, as far as just life shit, you feel me? And, uh, you know, dropping six tap, it was like, it was major for me, you know, I was excited about it, I was hella excited, but I didn't think it was gonna put me as far ahead as it did, I did not, you feel me? It did, it, you know what I'm saying, it was far beyond measures, you know what I'm saying, it exceeded all our expectations and shit, it's hard, bro. It was like inevitable to make a part two. And, uh, you know, me and Bino, I feel like we set a new tone for LA. Like we created a new wave. Like if you really, if you really from the city, you you understand. Like It wasn't long after, you know, the passing of Nip. And I feel like the city kind of needed that vibe. You know, six tape bring a good energy. And, you know, it's kind of for all crowds. If you older, I feel like you don't fuck with it. If you, I feel like the kids love it, you know what I'm saying? Everybody our age is rocking with it. So I feel like it was good for the city to get out and dance and, you know what I'm saying, feel some, some real soul, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bino for this too. Bino went on tour. He had his, he was doing all his shows. Um, he allowed us to come out to the Observatory, the Roxy, and to the New Parish on Oakland. So shout out to Bino for that. Um, and Out the Blue uh, definitely brought us out to perform the six tape when he didn't have to. But definitely that, I think that helped change the tide as well because it actually put a face to a name for people to actually see Blast and see who he was in the flesh and um you know kind of feel the person's presence that they were hearing on the other side of the track other than the person that they actually knew which was me it's hard to like do anything like to do any of this like anything relating to my career without thinking of nip first honestly at this point only because you know i spent so much time stepping back and and playing a part in you know what i'm saying his situation and representing him and you know what I'm saying shadowing him 
rather than, you know what I'm saying, jumping full force into my own, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was just, I felt like it was worth it. You know what I'm saying? It was the best experience I feel like anybody could ask for in this shit. Chef got to, you know, he got to go sit down for a minute. He got a situation. And um, anybody that really know me, you know what I'm saying, beyond the music, it's like when you see me, you see him. You know what I'm saying? In every situation, he with me and, and hands on and, and really as invested in this shit as I am. You feel me? So hearing he was going away or just him being away is like, you know, it's a big fork in the road. It's a big, you know what I'm saying? presence that's missing, you know what I'm saying, and I'm trying to hold it down, you know what I'm saying, as much as I can, but it ain't nothing like, you know what I'm saying, me and him doing this shit together, so he play a big role in, you know, all this shit, and, you know what I'm saying, just like you hear, it's like you got Blast and Vic and you got Bingo and Shep, and it's just, it's all there, you know what I'm saying, but it's my dog, you know, he, he be calling in, you know what I'm saying, from the jail phone, you feel me? He's straight, he's smooth, you know what I'm saying? He's a good dude. Good head on his shoulders, he's gonna be all right. We ended up getting a crib in Miami, going to Guitar Center, buying all the, uh, all the equipment and building a studio right in the middle of the kitchen. So for part one, it was all me, of course. But for part two, I felt like it was bigger than just me as a producer. I wanted to bring in people that that I was inspired by, especially with a specific sound. Take off and then still stay humble and look out for your boys, like niggas that he been fucking with. That's some real nigga shit. I'm trying to make this shit a movie. You want to call me in your feelings. You sick of fucking with a goofy. And I know I ain't the easiest to deal with. Already trying me my do. So, six take two, I think the big transition. Um, six take one, Blast produced the whole thing. So six day two, I think that shows his growth as just an overall artist and a creator from going to being the only sole producer to being the executive producer. Format them as I go or come back to them? I think we should use the last couple days to start formatting everything. It's Chris O'Bannon, man. I'm out here in Miami with my boy Blast, bro. We've been rocking like 10 years, but not only that, but we got some crazy vibes. We got Jay from The Real. We up in here cooking like this the new West Coast, man. Talk crazy to me. You're going to have to speak about it, man. We brought in Jay Millie. Jay Million. That's uh, one of the newest Eagle members, which is a dope producer, dope creative, dope artist. The future. I'm going to let y'all know right now he is the future. Since six tape one, uh, made a lot more money, gained a lot more perspective. So, you know, when it came around to it, six tape two blast, instead of solely producing it, took it upon himself to make sure that he did the, the project right on the production side. The 
in my words, I always tell them the six tape two went to college. Like it, the, the sound elevated, um, the range and it elevated everything around it. And so, you know, we're, we're super excited for this to come out. about Malibu's we had a couple people that I respect in the game you know pull up even outside of music like we had Mizzle pull up we had Rance pull up everybody know Rance 1500 or nothing legendary for LA always important to have his ear in the room also we had DJ Head pull up the Coast Guard himself we had to get his ear on the 6 8 part 2 as well so what's crazy is Jay Millie his birthday is a day, I want to say, before mine. So he a Virgo. He, I swear, when I look at him, not to be on no, like, big homie type shit, because I ain't nobody big homie, but he just reminds me so much of myself. Like, I see me in him. So, like, he just go in humbly and just start working. And everybody in the room just be like, who is this kid? Like, he gets the room attention quickly, and then he just produce quality. No bad beats. Man, so Jay Million making pop out, bro is just super talented, you know? Like, you put him to a task, and 10 times out of 10, he's definitely going to complete it. So in Malibu, J. Melly produced She Perfect and one of the ones out there. Crazy, crazy moment for sure, especially being in Malibu. And um, yeah, it was natural. That's fucking impressive. You're fucking impressive. That nigga's impressive because that nigga, bro, is just 19 years old. That shit on the piano like that, too. Hey, man. Good looking, man. That's, 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 that's fucking impressive, bro. No cap. I'm looking to learn on this shit because you only 19. I ain't gonna lie, that's all I had to do. <laughs> that's all I had to do. So I, when I moved, I ain't had shit to do with them. in the same room when we in the same studio it's more intimate in a way you know what i'm saying it's more it's more understanding of, of you know what i'm saying where we trying to take it and, and the vibe we own and it's easier to pick up after him you know what i'm saying and vice versa you know what i'm saying you kind of can feel where i'm coming from better when we in the booth together if we in the just live together so the first one we didn't really do it like that you know what i'm saying it was more emails back and forth so this time around it's, it was cool to see like you know, kind of how we reacted to that, you know what I'm saying, adapting to just being in the studio together and collaborating. Might do well. That beat, I think that was the first one we started producing in Miami. We was just jamming out, really. But, um, yeah, everybody was a part of that that was in Miami. That was the first one we did. And we was just trying to outdo part one. So we had everybody playing live instruments and Jay Millie on the bass, Chris O'Brien on the guitar. And uh, it's crazy because that was the first song we ended up recording too on Six Tape Part Two. 
So uh, it, it worked perfectly. session going into part two it was a little awkward for me for sure i think i just put a little too much pressure on myself honestly and then i was just trying to uh, follow bino lee like what's up what we doing and he was just like you know we gotta outdo it of course but at the same time i had to remember to just do me you know but we had to break the ice for sure but we broke the ice so might do well so it was all up from then First song we did for Six Day Two was Might Do Well, and uh, that's actually one of my favorite songs. You feel me? It's it's a vibe, you know what I'm saying? I feel like you can play that at the cookouts, you can play it at the at the functions, you know what I'm saying? You can play it at the pool parties, you can play it at the jazz festival. <laughs> you feel me? It's it's, it's just really a vibe and, and it kind of, I don't know, it has a, a nostalgic sound, you know what I'm saying? The LA sound, a real West Coast vibe to it that I feel like everybody gonna rock with. What is that? part two just for the simple fact it's fresh you know it's a it's a different vibe for LA I feel like yeah Bino is like a fresh breath of air for the city and that's how they gravitated to part one so now that more ears and eyes is open they're gonna gravitate to part two even more this one is for y'all for sure me and Bino did this we hope y'all love it as much as we love it you know so there it is six day part two see did you be dreaming on the town there it is I feel like I'm on love and hip hop cause 